Welcome to the Buy Box Bandits podcast. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Buy Box Bandits podcast, episode 180. Let's go, baby. Yes, sir. Right? 180, 180 on the road to 500 right there. Brought to you by cousin, all out Amazon, Uncle Closer Miles here. Garrett's copying my outfit for the YouTube viewers as well and uh, such. But... <laughs> We are, uh, it's a pleasure to be joined by our man, Chris Rasick here, who's been a full-time seller going on four years, uh, which is pretty neat. And basically just want to dive into what it actually takes to become a full-time online arbitrage seller. I know you and I met about two years ago, and I think we really hit it off yep. that first podcast episode we did. That was really fun. Obviously, we love Chris. We yep. had him on, Chris Grant. That being, we've had him on a bunch as well. And you guys do the show together. So it's like, all right. Makes sense. Let's jam on this stuff, dude. So you just kind of want to fill the audience in on how you got started, your background, who you are, and you know what made you want to get in this crazy world of selling things online. Yeah, you uh, you interviewed Chris Grant's Batman, so you got to bring on the Robin, right? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for having me on. But first of all, uh, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, now um, you know what I am. You know, I was thinking about this podcast. You know, like when you guys asked me to come on. Um, you know, the first thing I thought about was where I always think about the difference in age when, when I follow you guys, you know, cause I, <laughs> um, I'm almost twice your age. Um, but I, I, I take a lot of positives from that. You know, you guys, you guys have an energy and, and a cruising speed that is so much faster than, <laughs> uh, than I cruise at. So, um, you know, it kind of results in, in a fearlessness that that I admire in you guys. So uh, uh, I do watch you guys closely on social media and your, and your content. So that kind of segues into uh, how I became a full time seller because um, I have I, I've got 20 years in, in, in finance, um, you know, and I kind of if you know that stereotypical story of you know, the middle aged guy that that gets stuck in middle management and, you know, has seven bosses to answer to it, it you know it's <laughs> if you've seen like office space and it, like that's not that far from reality uh in some circles and and it certainly wasn't far enough away from my reality um so it uh, uh it, you know I, I was always interested in side hustles you know um we had a we i used to have a, a fantasy sports group you know we did like DraftKings and FanDuel. we did like subscriptions <laughs> and played a whole lot of that and uh, so that was like kind of the subscription model. And, you know, I, I always like the idea of side hustles in general, you know, because I, I, I love the idea that you can clock out at five o'clock from your day job and then you have a choice there, you know, and, and a whole lot of people at, at the banks and, and the companies that I worked at would go to happy hour and they go get, you know, go get a buzz on, get something to drink, cheap, cheap drinks. And whatnot, and they're but they were spending money, and I love the idea of while they're spending money, I can make money, mm. you know. So it it had a multiplying effect. So and that's what I really liked about it, you know. They're dropping fifty bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever, and and you know I can turn around and make a couple hundred bucks. I I mean I was just I was in love with the idea and the way that so, compounds too, you know, over time, man. For sure, yeah, exactly. Um, so it was always something I was interested in, and then um. You know, I kind of uh, the the stories from the pandemic. You know, kind of like a, if you remember the the Great Resignation, they called it for a while. Um, I think during lockdown, um, you know, people kind of you looked inward. You know, and and, and you kind of um, reevaluated your time. Uh, you know, and there were, there was a whole lot of people uh, talking about it, and a whole lot of things to read about people wanting to take their time back. You know, and and why are they? Because people were working from home, but you're busting your butt for a corporation that that you know you could argue doesn't really care about you. You know, he, he, you know the, those sayings that like if you quit, they're going to replace you in a matter just of number, a couple yeah. days. Yeah. So you know, I kind of that kind of just burrowed in my head and, and just kind of dug deeper and and you know kind of having the side hustles already, uh, learned about Amazon. I love the concept of it. Um, you know, so so I dug in because I wanted out. You know, I wanted out of the rat race. So um, I imagine that's got to be a familiar story with a, a lot of the sellers that that joined well, up. Well, something Miles and I joke about about a lot is kind of like what we call the golden handcuffs, right? A lot mm -hmm. of people working and making good money, right? But in a job that they feel stuck in, right? You mentioned the finance. Mm -hmm. 
and we talk about a lot though, ton of engineers converted Amazon. Yeah. Sellers. Once you get above like 150, <laughs> right. You know, of, yeah, I'd say like above 150 K a year, it's a below, blessing and a curse below 500, right. Below four, I, I let's call it 300. Yep. If you don't have kids, 500, if you have kids, whatever, right. You're, you got zero chance of ever really, really being rich most likely, but you also yep. got pretty much zero chance of ever being broke based on being your skill set. Yeah. Right. Right. But that's also a very exactly. tough place to be ambitious in. Right. Right. So how do you kind of think about overcoming that? Because now most of the people listening to this, if they got this far, they're already interested in it. Right. You, you know what I mean? This is, you know, sure. your, your guys show our show, right? You know, you got to dig a little bit to find it, you know, where it's not the most mainstream thing, even mm -hmm. in the Amazon space and everything. But right. how do you kind of think about, you know, was that ambition always there? Uh, did it come up over just compounded hate and going to meetings enough? Like, how do you think about that? I think it, it was, I, you know, I think the desire is, was always there. You know, I, I think it's a matter of finding an outlet, you know, um, and, and you kind of like you hear about these ideas and there's there's a whole lot of pie in the sky. You know, I mean, that's why that's why people fall for the, the you know, get rich quick and schemes and stuff like that, because the desire to get out is there. You just need something. You need a little bit of proof of concept. And then you need some results. You know, I just, I, I want to see it working because like, look, let's, let's be honest, you know, it, at my age with a family, with four kids, you know, there's, um, there's some reservations, you know, and I, I have to, you know, I can't go as fast as I want to, because I have to make sure the numbers check out. I have to make sure that I'm responsible and, you know, because if, whether it's real or perception, there's, uh, if things go sideways or, or upside down, that could be devastating. You know, that could, that could affect, you know, and, and I have people to think about, you know, children and, and, you know, spouse and whatnot. So, um, you know, so it has to be very controlled, you know, so I'm very, uh, I'm very focused on proof of concept, you know, like the, but I'll tell you what, that, you know, those first couple sales come in and you have your first day and, and you're like, holy crap, this it took works. me a week to make that at the corporate job. I didn't have to sit in any meetings and have to look at any people. Or, right. Or... Yep. Yeah. You get a quick flip and, and, and it's great. You know, the great thing about this is that there's so many different ways to get that proof of concept, you know, because I, I also had like an eBay store. I still do. Cause that's, you know, I'll sell my returns and stuff there. And, um, you know, I did a little bit of garage sailing too, you know, because I, I didn't want to sink a whole bunch of capital in it because I didn't want to be on the hook. You know, I mean, that's, you know, those are precious savings to me, you know? Um, so, you know, I did a little bit of garage sale and I flipped like this. It was actually uh, grand theft auto vice city. If you remember that video game, it was a, like an eight disc CD box set of all the music from that video game, bought it for 10 bucks. I flipped it for 150 <clears throat> and it was like, well, oh, you know, I was just hooked. It was like, it was crack, you know, <laughs> basically I was like, all right, I am in, you know, but then there are also the, the Amazon flips where you get something, you know, and you're actually able to find something that's ranked like, you know, sub 20,000 and it's just flying off the shelves and you can actually, you build enough of a moat or, you know, enough of a discount, you stack your discounts and you can actually make a, a profit off of it. And you just fly through your entire stock that you sent in that's almost just as addictive, you know? So that's, cause that's the speed of money, you know? So it's, there's all these different avenues of, of this proof that you can get doing, uh, you know, e-commerce. So um, I think that was the big thing. It's just proof that it worked, you know, I needed to know that and, and I got that pretty quick. So it's off and running after that. Yeah. I like the way you kind of light up talking about it. I think we kind of share that trade. I mean, all of us, you know, obviously we like doing this stuff. Otherwise we wouldn't be here and such too. However, on the point of outlet, right? Uh, vehicle to do business with. There's a lot of people out there that like talking about this stuff that like thinking of how much money is the restaurant making or whatever, or sold stuff mm -hmm. on eBay, like you did sold shoes like I did. The problem is you can't find those people at work, right? You're probably not going to find right. them at the bar or you, or at least not as easy, you know, in a small town and such. So personally on your end, um, I know obviously you and Chris are really good friends. Did was it a lot of just like, all right, I'm learning this on my own or were you pretty out there, you know, in the space in the community fairly soon, fairly quick in the journey? No, I, uh, I, I was on my own for a long time. You know, I, uh, I, you know, I, I, I love to read about stuff and, and, you know, I, I'm never really lonely, you know, I'm kind of one of those, uh, you know, private guys, uh, not a hermit, you know, like I'm not, you know, 
<laughs> I do go outside sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but no, a lot of it was just uh, learning on my own, uh, you know, taking the courses and stuff and kind of studying. Um, you know, I, I read everything I could get my hands on. I watched, you know, the videos and stuff like that. And then um, I kind of had to manufacture my own networking efforts. You know, I've always known that it's important. Um, you know, that's even outside of e-commerce, outside of this space that we're in, you know, networking, um, is very important. Um, so, you know, I started, started a mastermind before I even knew what a mastermind was, you know, <laughs> like, like I had to look up the definition of it, but, uh, uh, yeah, it, the, the, the fact that I didn't have peers to talk to became evident very quickly, you know, and, and I, I knew I would be better off, you know, the, the more people that I talked to. So, uh, you know, whether it was a matter of joining discord groups, um, you know, starting the mastermind just, and, and I made, I made it a weekly meeting. I said, Hey, it's, you know, it's a weekly meeting and every single week you have to, uh, provide at least, you know, five leads or, or I think I said like a profit minimum, you know, like to stay in the group and, you know, just had to have a little skin in the game, you know, otherwise people are going to blow it off. Um, but that was great. I got two sellers that had been around for a long, long time. One, one was right about a million dollars. He was doing it full time. Um, another one was still had a day job, but he was doing serious volume, just working on a part time. Um, and there was another part time seller. And then there was a new person with me. So it was, it was a great mix. You know, the one important thing to, to note was that even though I was a new seller, uh, we, the new sellers still had something to offer the older sellers. Always, you know, always. That's always, what always. they're worried about yeah. to justify their lack of, uh, you know, or, or to justify the massive procrastination yeah. that they're doing. They love saying yeah. that. It's a natural question to ask yourself. Like, what? why would they want to talk to me? What do I have to offer these guys, you know, these sellers? Um, and what you have to offer is a fresh perspective. You know, you, you, you've just recently taken in all this education, you know, so you're going to have a fresh set of eyes. You're going to remember things. You're going to know things right in the front of your brain that these older sellers have long forgotten. You know, um, it, it's there's there's far more value as a new seller. I mean, just getting in there, absorb everything you can. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Don't don't think that that you're not bringing anything to the table because, yeah, you absolutely are. Uh, so because, like, and there's an energy, you know, you're just excited. You know, I was, I was finding all these leads and I was like, Hey, you know, sharing everything I could. And, and because I wanted this to work, you know, it's, um, that energy is, is valuable. You know, it's, it's contagious. So let's kind of dig into the phase where you're just starting to like break those handcuffs off. We're just starting to kind of punch the ceiling. You've already had the proof of concept. You already have some sort of confidence and, in, in kind of yourself as a business owner, the business model. And it's like, you're looking to take that next step, but it starts to get a little uncomfortable because you see the other side, but you don't necessarily know how to like cross that bridge. And again, I think this is a, a place that a lot of people kind of find themselves in, right? They're maybe doing 40, 50, 60 K a month. They're making that 120, 150, and they don't necessarily know how to bash the door open. Let's, let's kind of dig into that phase, the awkward phase. Yeah, there's, um, <laughs> and it's such a wide, such a wide range, you know, because if you're, if you're one of those people like I was and you're, you're at a day job and you're grinding away and you know, it's, it's just little by little, it's eating your soul. You know, you, you sit there and you think about, you think about working for yourself, you know, and, and there's, there's a, a romantic quality to it, you know, you, because it's, it's an escape, you know, so you kind of, you work this fairy tale in your head on how great it's going to be. And um, so then once However, you end up getting there once you finally pull the trigger, you know, and, and, and you put your resignation in and, and you decide that's it. It's, you know, sure. It's the weights lifted off your shoulders. You know, there's there's this this rush of of freedom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So and there's all the positives that go with it. Right. But then it's so funny because there's a moment very quickly uh, after that kind of wanes away a little bit where. You realize you have no idea what you're supposed to do, you know, <laughs> like uh, you've been, you've been told what to do and you've had this, this oh, regimen. You see that man and people like so many new sellers desperately yeah. want to be told what to do. Cause right. Yeah. For better or for significantly worse, they've never had the chance to make their own decisions. So they don't trust themselves. And in some cases, rightfully so they don't trust themselves because they haven't proven themselves yeah. yet. 
But yeah, you see that all the time as people just want to be told what to do. So I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt, but like, no, we're no capable. The... you're fine. If you're listening to this, if you found this episode, this corner of the internet, you're very, very capable. You don't have to go fight in wars like human beings didn't used to. You get to buy Legos and sell them for a three X markup. Right. Be thankful for it every day. Yeah. And, and think about it. Like when you're, when you're punching the clock at your day job, you know, I think, I don't know how scientific this is, but they say, you know, you're only actually working about 20% of your day Oh yeah. at, at, at max. <laughs> right. So, so then, you know, so depending on how much you fake it and how good you are at faking that you're actually being busy doing something, um, you know, so then all of a sudden you, you're making your own schedule, you know, and, and the fact that you've been faking it for 80% of your days for X number of years, however long you've had the day job makes it tough because it's like, okay, well, I, you know, I can't fake working for myself, you know, like I was first year of, of being full time. I, I was a horrible employee. I felt I, I wanted to call all the people that I managed over the years and apologize. But like, I, I am not only am I a terrible boss, I'm a terrible employee. You know, <laughs> I wanted to apologize to all of them um, because it's difficult. You know, there, there's no for the most part, there's no rule book. There's no protocol. You know, you have to build your own schedule. You know, and and it's um, that can be scary and and it's empowering at the same time. You know, because now you have your full workday. Number one, you get to decide how long your workdays are. You know, depending on your ambition and and you know what you want to do, and um, and then you get to design the whole thing. And if it's only four hours, but you know that four hours of working for yourself could be far more productive than the eight hours you spent punching a time clock. And the important part with that, too, is that your hour year one is significantly less productive than your hour year two, year three, et cetera, right? You get that compounding effect of time. You get the leverage that comes from the accountability and that the more skill you build, the more money you make, even if it might be the, you know, the same amount of time as well. Speaking of time further, and this is probably the number one constraint uh, and or definitely is from the people who, okay, they have a, a good job, a family, they really don't like the job though, right? How the hell do you manage time? Because that's one thing Garrett and I are unbelievably not qualified to advise on, but we get a lot of questions about, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's it can be tough. Um, you know, you, you have to, similar to, to scheduling your day, you, you, you kind of have to define everything. You know, there's, we've had some serious conversations, you know, with me and my wife. Um, you know, I've had some you know, I've tried to to have conversations with the kids, you know, it's like, like, you know how mommy leaves and, and, you know, goes away for hours. And, you know, I said, I, I do that, but I do that in my chair, you know, <laughs> in the other room, you know, but it's, it's tough. I mean, I tell you what, it, it I, I almost, I was this close to uh, renting a, a co-working space <clears throat> just so I could change locations. Um, Cause I, well, she's in kindergarten now, but my youngest one, um, she's only been in kindergarten this year. Um, before she was in school, that kid ate like once every 45 minutes. <laughs> and it, like, if you guys know the concept of context switching, which is like, you know, it, they say like, if you're, if you're in fl uh, like a flow state, you know, and you're focused, if you're interrupted, it takes you on average 22 minutes to get back to the, the, the focus point that you were at the flow state that you were in before that, you know? So like, it, you know, and, and, you know, people may laugh at you. It's just a little pack of fruit snacks that a five-year-old wants, but it cost me, you know, 20 minutes or so, you know, cause you have to figure out where you were and kind of get back into that mindset. So it can be tough. Um, a lot of it, you have to clearly define it. You know, you, you have to define your boundaries, define your work day, and you have to define like the end of your work day too. You know, I think it's important to, to define how much is enough. You know, because it could be tough to to shut it off, you know, because there's a little bit of guilt sometimes, you know, like if I'm slacking during the day or something like that. And, and you know, th there's a little something in the back of my head that knows that I could be making money, you know, and I probably should be making money, you know, so it could be tough to turn off the hustle, you know, not that I'm overflowing with it, but, you know, it's it's we control so much of our income, you know, so it's you almost have to give yourself permission to to clock out or, or, you know, sometimes clock in depending on, uh, you know, your motivation. So, but yeah, it, it is tough because it's, 
And, and it's worth mentioning too, if, if you're working from home, uh, this is where all my recreational stuff is, you know, like, you know, if you play video games, it's going to be just off camera, you know, my books, you know, it, it, you know, it, this is where I, this is my, this is where I take my leisure too, you know? So it's, it could be tough to have that dual purpose. Um, and it, it could be tempting to, you know, maybe not be as productive as, as you should be sometimes. So it, yeah, there's, there's a balance. It's funny. We, uh, so miles and I have, have gotten really close with your part, your business partner, the other Chris over the years. Um, and we always kind of consult him as like the, the godfather of Amazon because he's been in the mm -hmm. States for so long. What right. specifically kind of stands out to you in terms of like the, the, how drastically the marketplace has changed over the past three, four or five years specific to Amazon and how you kind of envision it to continue to change over the next couple? Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I don't, I don't let it get to me. Number one. Um, it, it, yeah, there's been a lot of changes, um, you know, and that, that's, that can be upsetting, you know, that, that brings a lot of, uh, you know, emotions into play. Um, but I've been, I, I've been pretty good at, at not letting the emotions get the better of me. Um, because I, I've always had, had a big picture. I've always found it easy to see the big picture. Um, you know, Amazon, Amazon changed the entire industry, right? Um, it wasn't that long ago when packages that you ordered online used to take about 10 days to get to you, you know, and, and shipping wasn't free usually, you know? So then Amazon came in and built this incredible infrastructure, uh, you know, and this logistics, this delivery system that, that, I mean, basically chopped it, you know, it basically decimated it, you know, it basically turned into to free delivery in a day, two tops. Um, it, which, and it's interesting if, if you guys know Scott Galloway, if you listen to him at all, he, uh, he has this great point where he says billion dollar companies specialize in saving people time, you know, because if you can, if you can do that, you can build a massive, massive company. And the examples he gives is, uh, the company clear that's in the airport. Yeah. Yep. Yep. True. True. Yeah. They have a $3.8 billion market cap, that company. And, and the whole company, the focus of the company is to get you through the airport quicker, right? Save you time. The other example he uses is Netflix. Netflix actually did it twice, right? It's, it's, it's become ubiquitous and people kind of just gripe about uh, price increases now when they talk about Netflix. But Netflix actually, first, they, they killed the video store because they decided to deliver DVDs right to you in the mailbox and then let you send them back, right? So that saves you the trip to the video store. And then they decided to go on to, to with streaming, you know, and which completely, that was the final nail in the video store's coffin. But now you didn't even have to do, you didn't even have to bother with the mail. Now you can just stream it right to your TV, which also saved you time. Um, and they actually, there was a great story that they, they asked uh, the CEO at the time of Blockbuster, they asked him to buy Netflix because they were in trouble. They only had about three months of runway left before they were completely out of money. Uh, so they offered it for sale for like, I want to say like $50 million to Blockbuster and, and Blockbuster laughed them out of the, out of the office. So, and, but now Netflix is, I don't know, was it three, $400 billion market cap? Yeah. It's interesting because they, that... because they save time. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Know? And there's, there's context to that too, with Amazon, how like when you're a new seller, you sell books typically back in the day and then retail mm -hmm. arbitrage takes more time, but the products sell quicker. So you save time, technically online arbitrage you get the product delivered to you. So that saves time and they sell just as quick right. as the ours. So there's all types of like similarities in that stuff too. So thinking back yeah. to Chris a couple of years ago or the person listening to this, because statistically, specifically on the podcast audience, we primarily skew 25 to 44 and it's like 90, 99% male. I think it's even above 99% male. 99.4, I think. It yeah, is. 99, exactly. Right. <laughs> so it is primarily demographically people who, you know, are starting this part time. Uh, give either like the blueprint or just like the tips and stuff people need to really understand to quit their day job. Like, what do they actually have to do? They know they have to sell products, but what are some of the kind of intangibles and like action points? Uh, you, you need to know your numbers. Um, and if, if you think you know your numbers, chances are you, you don't probably know your numbers. Um, that's, that's the key to scaling. Um, yeah. Cause the worst thing you want to do is, is get ready to make the jump. And turns out you're not making as much as you think you were, right? Um, and and you really need to 
kind of, you need to understand the, the little stuff, you know, whether, whether you end up outsourcing it or, or getting ready to outsource it. Um, you know, think of everything as, uh, uh, assign a dollar amount to every task, you know, and, um, and you can get a pretty good estimate if you know your numbers, which that's another positive of, of, of knowing what they really are. Um, you know, assign a, a, a dollar, you know, a, a value to every task and then constantly ask yourself, does it make sense for me to do this task or am I better off outsourcing this? You know, and that goes to, to as far as your bookkeeping goes, um, as far as your returns go, um, make sure you stay up on your returns because uh, that's kind of a sneaky little leak in the boat if you're not oh, active on that. Yeah. Um, you know, your death pile, you can laugh about your death pile or, you know, in my case, my wife gives me the hairy eyeball, you know, and as the, the death pile kind of <laughs> creeps out into the rest of the house. Ooh. But that is capital. That's that's your bottom line right there. You know, so you need to get that as fast, you know, as much as you concentrate on your Amazon stock and, and selling that and turn it over as fast as possible. You need to take the same that same um, aggressiveness with your death pile. You know, because it, it's even if you're taking a loss and it's not the it's not the sexy sales, but it's the stuff that could keep you afloat, you know, and kind of get you breaking through to the next plateau of, of where you want to eventually be, you know, and, and make sure that you, you, you know, you have your schedule, you know, the, the best part, like we talked about when when it's, you know, it's difficult to when you're self-employed, knowing what to do, you know, because you've been told what to do the whole time. Um, the great thing about starting part time is you have you've done all this stuff in such a concentrated period of time, you know, whether it be a couple hours after your kids are, are in bed or whatnot. But I've always said part, starting this part-time it's, it's probably the greatest part-time job ever. And starting part-time is such an advantage for when you go full-time, right? Because you've, you've had all this stuff concentrated into little pockets of time because that's six all you had. And six to 12. Yeah. 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 Right. So now once you finally uh, quit your day job, and you, now you've opened up the entire day, but mm-hmm. you know you can do it in two or four hours or whatever you've been doing. How much it. more can you do in a whole day with right. more energy? Now, now you're talking about multipliers. You know, now you're going to compound it, right? So, or, or if I think it's uh, what is it? Uh, but it's basically there's this law that says uh, whatever task you have will expand That's to take so up facts. So the right. amount of time that you allow it, right? So don't let that four hours of work stretch out to eight, you know, because that's you're gonna you're gonna pop the 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 balloon of your dream, you know. It, it, if you you know you you were able to do it in four, so now you can do twice the amount of work if you decide that it's eight or one and a half, and if you decide it's six and you want more free time or whatever you're you know. Your well, that's personal... kind of the principle that Profit First was written off of. Like you kind of force mm-hmm. it into to fit into that little the peg, and then you just make it work, and you end yep. up being may, way more efficient, way more productive. You just make it happen, right? Yep. Yeah. Make sure. Yeah. Once you once you pull the plug on the on the day job, man, just keep the same, stay at the same speed, and you know it, you'll eventually accomplish what you were you were hoping to in the beginning. That's uh, that's a big key right there. Yeah. See, now the neat part about this whole podcast is we didn't talk too much super tactical Amazon wise, right? Like I I think, um, you know, sometimes we might dive a little bit too deep into that and such, but we talked a lot about specifically like the dream outcome, which for a lot of people is quite the nine five and such, right? So I think that stuff Mm -hmm. was uh, pretty valuable and everything. And where can people follow you on social media and check out what you got going on podcast wise as well? Yeah, uh, social media on Twitter uh, is probably the most active uh, at Chris Rasick. Uh, it's a, that one's a simple one. Um, you can follow me on Twitter there. I've got uh, Instagram, which is basically just a, a dupe of my Twitter, but uh, I think that's Chris Rasick underscore O A L two four seven. And then yeah, I am uh, I, I'm just off to the to the right or the yeah to the right of Chris Grant in the podcast, uh, check out him clear the shelf uh, on all the socials and you'll, you'll see me tagging along riding his coattails. Yeah. <laughs> well, I really appreciate uh, you coming on, man. And thanks to everyone for listening and, uh, you know, yeah, take into account having. this stuff, right? A lot of you guys listen to this fit the demographic that Chris was a couple of years ago. He was able to make it happen. You can make it happen too. It's not all just, gotta- just young not the... handsome looking people like garrett you know what I mean? that's <laughs> not that's not the only demographic that this is appreciate you guys we'll see you guys in the next one